whether we like the explanation or whether we don't like the explanation, we've actually got an explanation. So I'm going to leave it there and carry on with the agenda. Is that agreed? Thank you. Thank you, David. I still need to approve the minutes. <coughs> Is the committee agreed that I approve the minutes?
The second one to share with you is slightly different to service, in uh, service income, and this is about investments. And as you can see over the last sort of five years, the investments that local authorities are making, so this is typically treasury management, is on quite a big increase in terms of how they're successfully using the money that is contained within the council's accounts to actually invest and also additional borrowing that many councils are taking on to try and increase the amount of income that is coming into the council. And again, this is highlighted within the report, so this is English local government investments, and as you can see, it is definitely on the rise across, across England. What are we doing on Will? Well, basically, the, these, this, this is a slide I have shared with you before, but I think it's worthwhile going through again. These are some of the factors identified back in 2016 and before then in terms of what's driving the development of the commercial approach for the council. We've been on this journey now for about the last 15 to 18 months in terms of developing a commercial approach. And there's a variety of different factors there. I'm not going to run through all of them tonight. I think we'll be aware of most of them there. But what I just wanted to pick out, of course, is what we call the success in rural trade services. Because when we talk about the commercial approach, while the commercial approach is new for the council as an overall approach, we've been training for many years. We've got our leisure centres, we've got the floor pavilion, we've got 4.2 million pounds worth of income that comes in from schools. There are many examples of where we have been trading successfully for years. It's about building upon that experience and expertise within the council to ensure that we are getting the best value for money out of those services, but also looking at new income opportunities that may be possible within the council and beyond. So that's the one I really wanted to highlight in terms of the factors that are driving it. And of course, underpinning all of this is ensuring that we do deliver our 20 pledges for 2020. And the commercial approach sits across just about all of those 20 pledges. In fact, I think when I've had to write a report in the past, it says, which one of the pledges is the commercial approach about? And I find it very difficult to identify there is not one. In fact, it's pretty much all of those. The commercial approach can actually sit and, and, and quite comfortably sit and assist those delivering those pledges. Something else just to point out before I go on to what we've been doing individually within the council is in terms of our current partners. Because whilst we at Rural Council are looking to develop our commercial approach, so are other public sector partners and businesses, of course, have been doing this for many, many years. Not only on the Wirral, but across the northwest and the country. And at the moment, that we're estimating is about a £26 billion pounds worth of spend per annum across the range of services and businesses across the Wirral. What we're looking at is looking to do some more, if you like, collaborative work to ensure that we get better value for money from that spend and ensuring we can tap it and work with our partners, not only to get better value for money, but also to deliver better services and outcomes. So working with other, other organisations, particularly within the public sector, but just as much with the businesses as well, to ensure we do get those better services and outcomes overall. Again, another slide that has been used with, with your good sales of personal business and, and um, Opening scrutiny is where we want to be. And it's about what we say is about getting the balance right. On the left hand side, we've got what we perhaps is called a traditional public sector funded by taxation and grants that's really focused on its outcomes, not much commercial activity going on at all, looking at how it's spent, perhaps looking at some efficiencies and savings. And on the far right hand side, we're looking at very highly commercial private companies, strictly about seeking profits. And it's about where, where do we as a council want to be in terms of our commercial approach. Some of the leading commercial councils, we would say, are getting close to those commercial <coughs> private companies. But of course, what they're doing as well is, as we are as a public sector, not only are we looking to generate income, but we're also delivering services and social value. We probably never want to be quite at the far end. Perhaps not, we don't want to be the Ryanair of the local authorities. But it's more about being more, but we need to be close to those leading commercial councils such as the Nottinghams, the Warringtons, the Doncasters, etc., who are leading more, doing much more in terms of innovative approaches and maximising their opportunities to generate income to help with the budget challenges that they face with the councils. I would suggest we have moved more towards the right in the last 15 to 18 months, and I'll outline some of the things we have been doing that shortly. So what have we achieved so far? New operating model came into, came into place last year for the council and under the three main areas, every single one of those had some reference to income generation becoming more commercial. I think an important part within the budget setting over the last couple of years as well has been a much greater emphasis on the income generating side of, of things rather than just the efficiencies and the savings and the spending. It's looking more at how we can generate income. 
So about 15 to 18 months ago, a project group was established to look at how you can generate new income and looking at developing a commercial approach. And it had two main outcomes, just to remind you. The, of the project, the two main things were to try and get as close as we could to an extra £1 million worth of surplus per year from the commercial approach for the next four years. So that's not income, that's actual surplus to help offset some of the financial challenges that are being faced in other parts of the budget. Making sure we do that legally, of course. But secondly, and I think just as important, is about embedding a more commercial culture across the council. For many fellow officers that come into the council, we, have, we may not have had a commercial background, some of you may have done. But for many of us, selling, <coughs> marketing, generating income doesn't sit as natural bedfellows for us instinctively. However, there is the potential there to, for officers to develop. And we've got some very good examples across the council of some very innovative, I and mean, we would say entrepreneurial, but even entrepreneurial officers in terms of how they're delivering services on behalf of the council. Overseeing leisure, the full pavilion, as I said, many of the school training services, garden waste, etc. So people have got the opportunities and the potential, but it's about making sure that all staff are developed in terms of becoming more commercial. So phase one, this was last year, there was a cabinet report agreed back in June which set out the vision and the principles for the commercial approach. And then the project was launched with the, the, the main transformation program. We had three work streams that were work, yeah, three work streams that were work that uh, kind of coordinated some of that initial work. And then we moved into phase two. And phase two was really about making sure that some of the actual deliverables from the project were developed. So what was what can we manage in phase two? Well, back in last September, I think it was, we needed to review the largest income generators across the council. So it comes back to what I was saying about those sort of wealth of expertise within the council, both officers, members, stakeholders, etc. And I'm just understanding how we can tap into that expertise and share that expertise to make sure that it's best used across the council. Not always, not necessarily going outside but looking within to try and find where that is. And that report is a short, short report, but it did identify some of the, the really good practice, but also some of the barriers that are in place for some of our income generators and services. Another area that's began some work was around income recovery and debt, and this, that's still ongoing at moment in time, and that's about making sure we maximise our income. This is more around council tax and business rates, and also about the debt management side of it as well. And then we did some work around support and challenge on fees and charges and making sure we're, we're trying to get as close as we could to that extra million pounds. The, the figure we quoted in the budget this year was an estimated about 650,000. We're, we're close, we think, to about 800,000, but that's income this year. So at the moment, it's estimation depending on what, what, where, where the year may go. And then finally, an internet site was developed. Um, it's not funny, but which is also looking at a, a, a draft commercial approach toolkit to help managers who either have new ideas or want to look at their current existing ideas how to make them better. And the final thing was we did develop two in-house e-learning modules. The first one was aimed at all staff, so all staff to be able to understand what we mean by the commercial approach. And the second e-learning module was aimed at those front of house um, staff who were delivering income generating areas, so such as leisure, before pavilion, etc., and at their front and house staff to help them get a better idea of what we mean by the commercial approach. That was phase one and phase two. That took us up to about January, February of this year. Phase three was then launched, and we, we kind of uh, solidified what we were doing. We went into five main areas. There's four listed up there, and I want to be sure. So phase three is nearly, nearly concluded, and as of phase three, what we're looking at the end of that is that coming then transferred into what we call business as usual, and it's coming under the under Nicky Butterworth's area, um, looking at a more in-house commercial support and development across the whole council. So these four areas we looked at were growth, um, and the main thing around this was actually harnessing some of the ideas that staff have. So, Part of that was in our internet site, there is a, a new ideas page. We've also had a workshop working with some officers in terms of what new ideas they can come up with. These ideas were then filtered and put out to service managers. And of those ideas, we're currently looking at about four or five of these as being really good, solid ideas that can help to generate some elements of income generation. Investment is probably, that's more the area of treasury management and looking at some new ideas around that. Um, obviously, a, a, a possible area around this, because 
in Saudi Arabia, it's about rural growth company, and plus the possibility of a dividend from that coming back to the council in terms of investments, but also looking at the treasury management where we've got extra opportunities there as well. Fees and charges I've touched on in terms of hoping that we get as close as we can to that billion pounds of extra service coming from the fees and charges. Most of that's around looking at what other councils charge, making sure we're benchmarking so we're not overcharging your residents, but making sure we are, com are competitive with our fellow neighbours as well. But also looking at any new opportunities that may be there. And then finally, as I've also mentioned, is the ongoing work around making sure we maximise our income, particularly from council tax and business rates, but also looking at our debt management. So those are four ongoing areas that are not, these are areas kind of outside of Nikki's area, they're being managed within the council, but we're coordinating that as the final part of our commercial approach project before it comes in-house to carry on the work within the council. And to finish. Final bit is just to add to what we're doing about a more commercial culture. As I said, the internet site, which you've initially developed, has further developed more resources on there to help support managers. Um, Three more e-learning really models have been added to the list for managers to be able to access alongside such as sales, marketing and customer approach. Um, a commercial managers and leaders network meeting has been established and we've got 50 currently staff that have been invited to that. We've got about 40 of them attending those termly sessions at the moment. And that part of that's about sharing the practice, but also giving them some input. For example, the last meeting had a couple of sessions around the legal basis behind what we can do around the commercial approach and charging. But also another aspect of it was around looking at uh, the financial side and how the budget setting process was going to be in place. So it's about bringing information, but also giving them a chance to share their expertise with themselves. Many staff have never met many of the other people in that room before. And yet they're operating in, in a similar sort of way in terms of income generation and commercial approach. And then finally, we've um, started with our commercial skills program, again, aimed mainly at managers and leaders. Um, it's been developed in partnership with Warrington, and we've had delivered this in house for the last few years, so we are working on the back of that. I think they've gone through about 100 staff, about five cohorts. Uh, the first module commercialisation in the public sector was delivered at the beginning of this month. I was just working with further colleagues this afternoon, actually, about the next module, which is about non finance for, sorry, enterprise for non finance professionals. So, looking at different ways of how you look at the finance, apart from the standard way that we work with the council, that makes it more user friendly if you're running an income generating business, particularly looking at things like profit, loss, unit costs, etc. And then we'll move on to obviously a real focus there around customers and the products and service lifestyle. So again, we've got about 20, well, 21 staff that enrolled on that. We'll be running that again in January, repeating that, and if there's a further demand, we'll keep going until we run out of people. But once you go on, of course. So that's about developing a more commercial culture. And then finally, so a few further next steps. Um, looking to establish the commercial board and governance. I think this is crucial, particularly for new commercial ideas that are coming through from the council. At the moment, there is no formal mechanism by how a new commercial idea that's Obviously, that hasn't gone through transformation, but actually maybe quite a good idea is just formal. So we're looking to in, 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 in introduce kind of a workflow plus the commercial board and governance around this area. Um, working on finalising commercial strategy, we do have a very draft version at the moment. And my understanding is we are looking to get some support from Mike Hammy Allison, the pre- uh, really. that's, the, that's the words I was looking for. With a bit of a work group around here helping us develop and finalise the commercial strategy for the council. Um, further challenge and support for income generation in the budget, we're doing it even earlier this year in terms of working with our largest income generators across the council. Anybody who generates over £100,000, we're having, again, conversations with them about let's have a look at your financial modelling, where's your income coming from, where's the expenditure coming from, where's the efficiencies coming from. In the past, those conversations weren't really, it was more about what's your budget, what's your savings expectations. Actually a real crucial part of this is where's your income and how does it actually stand up to scrutiny. So we're having conversations with those and challenge and support put in to the service managers around those areas. Um, as I said, looking to further develop staff training and support. Another key thing we think is around um, we're at the process, we're not far off from developing our business to business approach. So looking for opportunities from our services to expand on the good work we're doing with our schools to see, in the first instance, if other public sector organisations may be interested in some of our in-house services, the likes of procurement, 
and they chart payroll, whether they're interested in, in and buying back any of those services from us and looking at some of how we can develop those with our fellow public sector organisations, but also possibly looking at in the future moving on to the private sector as well and whether there are some private sector organisations who may be interested in buying these services back from us and looking at how we might develop that. So we're calling that our business to business approach. And the final thing for me as well, of course, is obviously the group itself is looking at member engagements and training. And I think that's the second. Is that correct? That's the second item we're looking at. Uh, possibly. Possibly. Yeah, I think they can okay. And then the final thing for me, which I know you've had a slide, already are some useful resources. I've already mentioned about the reporting uh, <coughs> from the spectrum. It's only 24 pages long. It's not a bad read. We've got a short read as well, but I highly recommend that one. The Enterprise and Council paper is slightly longer, but again, it's got a lot of good examples. And we're using quite a few of the case studies there to help us. Um, LGA website in terms of commercialisation, of course, the MC website as well. So, some useful resources out there for development and commercial approach for the MC. Thank you. Thank you. Coming up to. Uh, yeah, happy to take any questions. I'll open it up now, David. Uh, thank you, Chair. The uh, last time we had a meeting on the 29th, we were told that we were going through a process of engaging the staff and getting them on board with the process of being commercialised. Does that go right through to the top of the organisation? All members of staff, including the chief executive and the, the senior officers. Yes, um, we took those comments and came back on board from the last time we presented. And to be fair, there is actually um, quite a large um, training programme that's underway now. There's different modules that we're looking to engage with staff. Um, we did run um, a leadership academy um, over the last six months, and one of those days um, was purely focused on commercial approach, but we do still uh, feel there's a need to continue with that training at um, that senior leadership level as well, so part of those modules that um, Stuart's just talking through in terms of... So all the senior officers are signed up? They will be in terms of right. making sure that that they're on that journey as well. Um, we have done the training with them um, in June in the past this year. And also what I've been doing is going around doing updates to the the, the various areas of the departmental management team meetings about the commercial approach and just bring them up to speed in terms of how it's going and how they can engage and also looking at, particularly for some of their services, they're actually actively involved in income generation as well. So that's on a regular basis as well. Two others, please, Mr. Chair. Thank you. The first one is in relation to the information we've got from Wellington. And what I've seen and read, they do a lot of land banking, holding the land that they've got. And they have dual ownership of the private companies for themselves. And that way the authority can basically get a double by the end because you own the property. Are you looking into that? It's one of those. Yeah, that would come under obviously the Treasury Management and Investment um, and they'd be, whilst we want to learn best practices from other councils that are further along uh, on that commercial journey, we have to do what's quite for the world as well, don't we, so whilst we take some of their learning, they're doing it, but we also look at what, what's best for us, so that will be measured <coughs> through the draft um, commercial strategy what we wanted to start to focus on and a lot of the work that we've been doing is that culture change, that mindset, um, working with the staff and that organisational development piece as well, what was important. And final chair, you're looking at the uh, front of staff, facing staff that meet with the general public here, you're looking to them for ideas because they're the ones who are dealing with it day in, day out. And again, um, I, I did reference it in the, in the presentation, but perhaps in not, not, not too much great detail. As I said, there's an intranet site, um, and on that intranet site is a, basically new ideas form. So we've had, I think it's up to 50 new ideas have come through from staff in a workshop as well. Um, but also what I've done is I've, I've uh, generated some materials on the intranet site to help managers work with their teams about coming up with new commercial ideas within their teams. Because it can't just be Nikki and I driving a commercial approach, it's got to be right across the council with managers as well. Um, so again, some help and supporting materials for them. How do you come up with a commercial ideas apart from sit people in the room and go, what's a good idea? It's actually taking just a bit more of a formal process step by step as well to support them. Thank you, Chair. Steve. 
Yeah, I just want to uh, quote one example of a public sector organisation doing something commercially to, to everyone's benefit, and that's um, I sit on Mersey Travel. We run the Beatles story. The Beatles story was in a pretty poor state of health. It now contributes a million pounds, roughly a million pounds in, in profit back into running other services. So, so there are examples in the public sector where it's a commercial success of one entity. Now, my other question is that I've always been fascinated by different charges. We seem to have blanket charges for everything. And for an example, a, a recent experience, I once needed a passport for somebody quickly, so I had to pay an extra fee to, to get things quickly. I'm thinking, I won't use, um, uh, I'll use EasyJet. Could we deliver an EasyJet service, but also have available the Emirates service for an extra charge and raise income that way on, on any of our items? As long as it's not buying a... I didn't mention that. Yeah, that's one. Uh, not, <coughs> my, my understanding is, I, I, I'm not quite sure about the details, but the registrars are running a service like that over the last couple of years. Whereby, if you want to get the various birth and marriage certificates, they, they, they meet the statutory duties, that's the standard service. If you want it in a quicker time, such as what you're suggesting there, then you, they, you do actually pay an additional fee to get that. So there are parts of the council <coughs> that are doing this already, there are other parts of the council looking at that in interest to see if they can bring that in as well. I'd also like to add some of that. You want, you want to stimulate these sort of ideas with, from the staff. Um, and having that different mindset where maybe less traditional and thinking a bit more open-minded and commercially and more business-like in some of the decisions that we're taking. Um, and that's why we spent a lot of time investment on the staff um, modules and the work and our staff engagement, the workshops, so that we can all be going on journey together really. Stuart, at the, at the end of your presentation, your excellent presentation, I like that, you said about members training. I'd like to think that members can be involved in the training as a whole. Nicky and I spoke about this. Um, members should be at liberty to go on this training the same as the staff. It will be very beneficial for those who can. Um, one other, one other quick. I'll bring you in there, Jean. And, uh, um, my concern is, we're not privatising the council, are we? We don't want to privatise the council, but because of the cost, we've got to do things differently. So I'd like an assurance that we are not going down the route of privatising this council. You know, what this is about is having a more commercial and business-like approach to decision-making around the investments, opportunities and growth that we're all has to offer. Um, so that comes, I think, members do play a part in that and I will be keen um, as part of, a we've already um, talked about pre-decision scrutiny work programme, we'll be asking for um, members to help input and shape what the commercial strategy looks like um, and I'd also welcome the opportunity um, for members to help shape what a training programme would look like. You've seen from the presentation sort of modules that will be taking staff through. Um, again, I'd be keen to, to be engaged with you around what that could look like um, for our members. And you will see through that it's not about prioritising the council, it's about having a more commercial and uh, business like approach to decision making and seeing the future uh, for where we'll come off that looks like. Thank you. Um, I, I, it's difficult at the moment because they're very early stages, so they're doing basically they're doing a lot of scrutiny about coming up with business cases and whether it's right to go forward. I suppose the question you might ask is around the likes of well, we're 50, why are there only now four or five that we're looking at? Um, to be honest, I think about 10 to 15 of them we're already doing. So you know they're putting forward ideas that we're already doing as a, you know, within the council. They just weren't aware that we're already doing it. Um, some of them have been looked at and said, well, do you know what, that, actually that just can't work because it perhaps might be legal constraints why we can't do it. 
Um, others have come back and said, um, actually, there's about two or three of them that said, well, actually, you know, we just haven't got the capacity at this moment in time. So one of the things we need to look at is how we develop some capacity to help and support those managers and those services to help realise some of these ideas that are going forward. So I, I don't really want to come out and say which ones we're looking at because at, at the moment I'm not quite, it's a bit difficult to say because they're just, they're, they're up for, um, they're being developed as business cases. I think once we've got a bit, perhaps if we come back again, we might have a bit more information to be able to give to you next time. Okay. Thank you, Chair. Um, just to follow up on that, Exactly what we were saying about the staff and so on. We as members all know each other because simply our photographs are in the paper or whatever. We change our managers and directors and Uncle Tom Coffee so often and we haven't got a clue off the time who's doing what when and how. Might say a name, might say a person more passionate, we can't go to places. So we need to know faces where you're exactly saying we sit down with the staff or whatever and discuss it. We get to know this is where we are on hand. But I couldn't tell you half the directors we've got and half the managers and so on because they're changing every other day. And I find that very difficult at times. If I want to speak, I just might pass someone on the staircase and it might have been someone or so on. That one sentence would have answered the question we was going to ask rather than going through a procedure of phone calls and everything else. We do actually know each other simply because, oh, like we sit here, but we do have photographs on ourselves. We haven't got a clue of the managers are, not unless we're actually working with them. That's a that's a fair point. If you take that on board, please. Sure. I think it's more than just our commercial approach. Yeah, it's across the board. Yeah, yeah. 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 David has made a note as well. Um, Jerry? Yeah, just a comment in, uh, just a few comments really, um, particularly what Steve mentioned about the importance of tours and the you know, Beatles. And I remember you know, many years ago with European funding, we set together, we put together the uh, historical uh, trail, um, which was a whole set of various historical plays, plays highlighting the history of the river right across the river from the east to the new right. Yeah. And of course, that has been enhanced now by over many years with all sorts of extra and historical markers and memorials. And now we see the importance of um, the rights of the world cycle routes and the tourists that are coming in through the world cycle routes, but also obviously walkers and everyone else. And uh, as you say, it, there's never been a time when tourism is so important to the local economy, it's an absolutely good. And as you say, you just walk over to Liverpool and you see the tourists in there, but you see the tourists in the Sunrise, you see them in Brighton, and uh, it's a really major you know, income uh, uh, generator that everyone you know, needs to uh, take on board. Yeah. Uh, yeah, just a uh, couple of comments to make sure. Um, just in terms of um, working across the board with all the different offices, the interim offices, etc. Are you working with different strategies and cultures? For instance, uh, just mentioned uh, on the table here, the culture and uh, strategy and leisure strategy in terms of uh, working with offices, uh, looking at the, the uh, theatres, the, the um, museums, the, the leisure centres, the libraries, etc. Um, is, is the, is, is, is the, Closer working, or it is that we're working together because it's important, it's important to this, isn't it? Um, you can just answer that for me, I think I'll, 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 uh, I'll be mad up. Uh, and, and just lastly, uh, Stuart, you mentioned in your presentation about good examples of, and we've been training for years, and you mentioned, I don't know if I've this one, you mentioned the floor of the Green Theatre. Uh, yeah, I just want to know that's a good example of successful training that has been sitting on a big subsidy for years. And one could argue uh, that it wouldn't be uh, successful if it wasn't with that council subsidy. I'm just wondering if you could give me how you can do that. I think, if I, if I can ask the second question first, I mean, my understanding is limited uh, in, in terms of, you know, I don't know the C4 really, but my understanding of it is the subsidy is being reduced over time. I don't, I don't think there are any other um, council run or council linked theatres across in England 
that don't have some form of subsidy going into them. So I think it's very difficult to actually run a council linked theatre stroke a play a type thing like the floral without having some form of subsidy. I think where I'd say they are being successful is the amount of subsidy is coming down over time. Um, and again, in some of the, uh, I suppose from my point of view, I look at how it's being managed and I look at some of the innovative ideas that are going on there in terms of promoting the shows that they often put on in terms of the marketing that's done, in terms of the financial management stuff. And I look at how that compares just within the council. And there's a lot of expertise that we're picking up from that's happening in the floor that's helping other areas of the council becoming more commercial. But I accept the point that still there is a subsidy there. Yeah. Um, in terms of linking up the different strategies, um, you mentioned around culture, museums, um, lots of the training that's been undertaken is uh, in those particular areas, as many people facing areas where there is a region of generation. Um, we see this commercial approach as it should be business as usual. It's not yet, but we should get to the state where it's business as usual. Um, the commercial approach is, a, is an enabler really of course to, to drive that innovation, the investment growth. Um, so it, it is cross-cutting across all of the council. Um, but a lot of that work is around organisation. We start with the organisational development the mindset. Thank you. I'd just like to come back to the floor a bit. You know, staggered with your answer, Stuart. Um, you've given us an excellent presentation on commercialisation. And then when you ask the question about the floor, which is top of our agenda of commercialisation, because it's a very successful theatre. And your answer was, well, there isn't any theatres in the country owned by councils which aren't subsidised. I don't know whether that's true or not. I would doubt whether the Winter Gardens in Blackpool is subsidised by the Blackpool Council. I mean, I don't know. But you talk there about changing culture mindsets. And you're all talking about, well, if other councils subsidise theatres. Now, the Empire Theatre, let's just stay local. The Empire Theatre isn't getting subsidies from anywhere. And yes, of course, it's a bigger theatre than the floor. Probably the floral is a lovely, lovely theatre. Probably its only drawback is it's only an 800 seater. But I'm a bit concerned that you, your offhanded remark, well, and we're talking about changing culture here, and we're talking about changing mindset. And the person who's leading it, Stuart, is talking about, well, we're reducing it over time. Well, we've tried to be reducing it over time for years. Not fast enough and not good enough. But I would hope now that you've come on board, Stu, you're here to replace the old mindset. And so I was a bit, we need to, and we need to do it very quickly because of the urgency of what we've got to do, because of lack of funding. Um, but we need to get the floor up where it's standing alone without any income possible. It's in fact, I would hope, we're going to be looking for a time when the floor is bringing us money in. I'm not saying what other councils are sorted out. And so, you know, we're doing, no, we need to get to a point where they're bringing us in your head. I, I, I do agree with you, Chair. I mean, I, I'm only going on information I've been given. I, I think it's, it's not my role in terms of commercial approach with Nikki as well. We're not there to kind of run everything. We're there to help and support the service managers who have the expertise in those areas to help make sure that, as you say, they get the best out of that particular facility, that service. Um, in terms of the comments about subsidy, I'm going on information I've been given. I, I'm more than happy to go back, go out and research that a bit further and come back to it and, and answer it in more fully detail. Um, but that's my understanding that I've been led to believe that air that's, that's if you like, council run facilities of similar size and nature to the four pavilion, all of those are receiving a subsidy of, of some nature across the across